My name's Kaylin. Just finished up my first season playing professional basketball overseas. In my head, I was coming back home to get right back into a serious relationship with this girl that I've been in love with for five years. Everything revolves around this Cassie stuff. Remember when you told me you guys and girls can't be friends? Yes, I did mention that. I think that is happening. You Not. guys didn't get married? What? No, we didn't. Dude, no. I totally thought by the end of the show they would have gotten married. I'm like shaking. I'm so nervous. Why are you so nervous? He needs to date her, or at least look at her more than just a friend. I want people to look at my shirt and get the beef sweat. I brought you guys a snack. Oh my gosh! Yeah! It's a piece of meat. So you would think it'd be irresponsible to propose to my girlfriend. <laughs> what do you think? It was like, well, the only way I can think to protect Kaylin is to like not like Cassie. I realized I was like forcing myself to feel certain way because I feel like everyone thought I should or it looked really good on paper. I just think that she's kind of finding herself right now, but I think she's just a great girl. Okay, guys, so we're fishing live sardines today for calico bass. Okay. And the fish are pretty active right now, so by the time that it gets to the bottom, you might already have a fish. Not yet. It's crazy, Tony, with all these fish over here that I'm looking at that you wouldn't catch at least one. <laughs> still feel your bait? fisherman weight. Can you still feel your bait running? Like oh, swimming? I feel it. Okay, that's a good sign. There you go, you got one. Real, real, real. <laughs> oh, look at, look at the curvature of this rod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's back breaking. Don't reel it out of the water. Woo! <laughs> it's a little one. It's just a warm up round. Oh yeah, I've fished before. I've caught in everything that there is. Fish, trout, salmon, halibut, two halibuts in a trout, a couple mackerel, some hooligan, seagull, you name it. So, oh man, we got a live one. Just huh? got one. Just reel, just reel. Oh yeah. Okay, keep it in the water one. right there. Don't reel it in anymore. That is That's insane. one you would take home. This is insane. Yeah. I did good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no idea. <laughs> I did that too. You gotta club that thing. No, you can't eat it. It's too small. But oh. I wanna eat it so bad. White sea bass. I really didn't know what I was doing at all. I had never fished before. Yeah. Captain Kyle was stoked about it though. I gotta get a picture of this. Look at that, it's picture worthy. Captain Kyle is proud of me. I'm so stoked for you. This is about the size of Tony when he was 12 years old. More like six. <laughs> That's a nice size. Don't pat, it's a fragile fish, he said. Fragile. Captain Kyle's proud of me. Did you take a picture of your little, what'd you get? Some type of bass? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm looking for bigger fish. Just let, just give him a nice soft toss? Yeah, just nice and easy. Awesome. Go, buddy, go. That's a trophy fish right there. Is it? Yeah. What makes it so? It's just really rare to catch them. There's people that fish their whole lives and don't get to catch them. <laughs> it didn't even look like you were trying that hard. It just came up. Honestly, fishing might be my new thing. In the middle of this five year period that we've been, we've known each other, I took a long break from him, but he didn't really take a long break from me. So I feel like it's good for him to finally try and move on from me because he hasn't yet. And he said he has, well, at times he said he has, but he, ad will, he I think he'd admit that he hasn't, which is really hard for him. And you were friends with all of our, all of my exes, like we're still friends with. Well, yeah, because usually the people that you associate with are usually people that I would choose to associate with. And that, and Kaylin, again, is, just a quality human. Yeah, yeah. And so it's hard just to shut him out and not respond if he says, oh, I'm in because town he and, and he'll, too. yeah. But if it's hard for you for us to talk to him or hard for him, maybe we should just, oh, ignore him. No, not ignore him. <laughs> but I mean, you know what? This isn't even gonna be an issue because he's going to the Philippines. Yeah, it's like I just wanna like not talk about it anymore. <laughs> I just want to focus on like school. I think he future. thinks he can convince you. I think he can feels like if he stays present in your life, whether it's with us, with your friends, with you, I feel like he thinks that 
that's going to keep him relevant and he can convince you over time. And I think sometimes because you're so nice that that can be interpreted as a sign of hope for him. Mm -hmm. Dude, when I decided that we were gonna go fishing today, I did not know it was gonna be so exhausting. I know. Let me just paint this picture for you. I wanna hear your thoughts. Today, we were out here. I was in competition with another male, you. We have our own forms of bait. You're hooking just little, little itty bitty babies, you not know? Not true. Things that nobody wants. You hooked more babies than me. Shh, let me finish. I cast my line out there. I'm maneuvering the right way. I catch myself a mythical white sea bass. Captain Kyle was so proud of me. This is a trophy fish. This is a fish you take it, home you know, to you, your... You, uh, you wasn't legal to take home. Well, listen, just listen. It's, just pretend it was. Caught this white sea bass. It was everything I was looking for in a fish. Found it here in Orange County. Ideal. Things don't work out. It's not long enough. I have to release it. I have to... It wanted to go, and because I wasn't allowed to, it had to go. Drop it in the water, and I... The rest of this fishing trip have been thinking about that white bass, and that's all that's on my mind. I'm casting out line after line, trying to satisfy myself with another fish. But I caught a couple calico bass, and they just did not satisfy me because it wasn't that white bass. You see the parallel I'm making here? So I was saying that there was the perfect one, and you wanted it. Seemingly perfect. But it was underage, so that's why you couldn't have it. Tony had a hard time understanding this, but the white sea bass represents uh, Cassie to me, just in the sense of rare catch, caught off the coast of Orange County. <laughs> that might be a once in a lifetime catch. That might be the only time my, I can fish every day the rest of my life, and that might be the only white sea bass I catch. Everything in life is a once in a lifetime catch. So yeah. you're telling me, don't settle for the calico bass. No, don't. <laughs> I didn't have my first date till I was 20 years old. Really? Yep. At Biola University? At Biola University. What was your name? Delaney. No freaking way. Likewise with her. So if you're picky enough, you'll find someone just as picky. You're living in a land of fairy tales because you found the girl you're going to marry, first date, now you're going to get engaged, everything's working out perfect for you. No, Let me throw I'm, you a I'm dirt ball. broke. I got $100,000 worth of debt. And she loves you anyways. That is like the perfect hey, girl. <laughs> that's the dream. Shoot for the stars, catch that juicy bass that you've always wanted, just be patient. What if I'm that old, washed up, what if I turn into Captain Ahab, just deranged, <laughs> looking for the white whale? Then no one's gonna like me. But you'll have a great story. Right, no, 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 no. You can keep it there, just cut the dark part. Yeah, there we go. Keep going. Linda is, she's actually a mutual friend of Cassie's and mine, and she is a Thai princess. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if her dad's the king of Thailand or something, but uh, Linda definitely has a very maternal role in kind of our friend group. I mean, she's married. She has her life together. Can we pray before we eat? Yes. Hand holding, my favorite form of prayer. I think she saw that she had everything all together, so she just kind of was like, time to take care of the kids. I don't know. But she's really embraced it. I'm not going to call her mom, though. Kayla and Tony, come on, just give it a try. Are they really just not going to participate? I don't know. You guys. You guys. Whoa. Come on. Give me five more minutes. OK, whatever. They're just scared. OK. Next feel step oh. <laughs> One. Two little. Oh, gee. I don't know what's going on. Cassie and Kaylin are beautiful people inside and out. Everyone around them, we all just want them to be happy, but it's just hard because they want something to change, they want to resolve it, they want it to come to a conclusion, and they know that it's been drug out for five years now, and they're just doing the same things and making the same mistakes, and the, it's the same cycle. Oh no! Oh no! Where are you? I like can't even balance because I'm so distracted. It's all part of the exercise. You got two with yourself. We're all ready for them to just be decisive and come to a conclusion because it's already gone on for too long, but with their next steps in life, it could really hurt the people that they end up with if it's not each other. I think um, I'm just gonna leave now. Oh. I know. 
I gotta okay. keep applying for those jobs, you know. Yeah. And I'm tired. I'll see you guys tomorrow or something. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. I love you. Bye. Love you too. You did. You guys are good. There's this place I volunteered at when we were at Biola called the Dream Center. It's in LA, isn't it? Yeah. They distribute food to people in need. So I was gonna go. You guys wanna come? When are you going? Tomorrow. I work in the morning. Oh. Wait, do you guys wanna go? I'll I can go. go. Yeah. I can see if Michelle will come too. Yeah. The more the merrier. Today we're at the Dream Center and it's just an opportunity for us to serve the people of LA who are in need. Hi, Cassie. Hi, Cassie. I'm Linda. Food. Linda. This morning um, we have all of our food out here, which everything is 100% donated, so we get the... We're all really blessed to live in the area that we live in and to be living somewhat comfortably. And although it could come off as a pat on the back to yourself, it's just, it's important to see that that's not everyone's reality and to bless people in less fortunate circumstances. I do feel like I need to be more involved in like some kind of service or ministry and like doing good. I think Jesus provided a really good example of his life on earth and his ministry. Like he was always just like doing things to help other people. And I think we're called to help others be in service, just like he was. So we're gonna make our way over to the next distribution, which everything's already bagged for and ready to go. So do everyone comes in one by at a time? Uh, it's usually three or four at a time to manage. Hi. Thank you. Yes, of course. Bag might rip. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. In here? How are okay. you? Okay. Ah. Good. How are you? Thank you. Broccoli. Hello. There you are. Today was really eye-opening. Yeah. It's like so close to us, yeah. you know, and I feel like we live this life and we're obsessed with all these trivial things. And there's other people worrying about real things, like how they're gonna get their next meal. Yeah. It reminds me to not focus so much on myself and 30 yeah. minutes away from us is a place that we can help people and make a small difference. Victor was one of the most interesting people I'd ever, ever encountered. He has just a crazy, crazy testimony, and it makes no sense to me at all. First of all, how someone like that is, to some extent, alive, and on top of that, a devoted follower of Jesus Christ with the attitude and demeanor that he has. You all finished up? Yep, finished up. Appreciate you coming down here, man. Wow. I uh, was telling the group that I was here with that, uh, you know, I got to talk to you a little bit briefly on the line and yeah. stuff like that, and just growing up close to you and hearing like the, mm. the briefness of your story, I just wanted to hear more. So if you just want to share some more with me. The streets to me were my numbness. I would numb my pain through the streets. Right. Yeah, so I would go back to Pomona, back and forth, hang out with the guys, drink, party, you know, did a little smuggling here and then to Canada, Miami, with the wrong people. Most of that, built something in my heart that was hardened against God. So when my grandmother spoke to me about God, I said, I don't believe in your God. I did 16 years total, three terms of prisons. I asked my mother, my grandmother got ill and ill. She says, As when I die, you will find out who you really are. I didn't, I didn't know what she would meant. So she passed away. I started feeling uncomfortable, started having dreams about the dream. And I started saying, see myself with the shirt that said dream, a black shirt. And I Googled it, it came out Dream Center. Little did I know it was a Christian program. So when I called and they called me back in the interview, I hung up on the girl when she says a Christian program. Boom, I hung up on her. She calls me again. She goes, can you please listen to me? It's a year program and you need to try it. You know, so I said, okay, we'll find out. To hear where God has brought you from and put, put you now mm -hmm. and to see what he's done to your heart too, so a heart and heart and now you yeah. have a heart to serve. It's just crazy. Like I'm worried, I'm worried about relationships in my job and <laughs> you're worried about serving and like there's many times I want to pack my stuff up because I get frustrated sometimes I need you know make some more money do my life I see people with families I want my little white house with the picket wife picket and fence. you have complete freedom yeah. to leave I have point, right? freedom to leave anytime I want 
God has, knows what he's doing because many times I wanted to leave, I can hear actually something in my heart telling me, be still. Wow. And the only time I would, the only way I would hear it is just respecting God, honoring God. It's been a tough road, I'll tell you that. There's times that you're gonna be like feeling sad, depressed, but that's when you need to feel your emotions. Push them away and just think about the next person. And when you start thinking about others, not what we want, things just start changing. Talking to Victor and someone who is so clearly on fire for God and is living a life where God's first in everything he does, it was just kind of like a reality check to me because I, I think it, it's never not been my desire to be in that spot. I, I just lose sight of it and it, it upsets me a little bit. I, I didn't know that Gil was going to be there today. What kind of terms are you guys on right now? Ever since we broke up, he's like been trying to be back with me. He would admit that too. You know? Yeah. So it's almost like you dated, there was things wrong, you guys broke up, but then it's like constantly in this weird, like, let's be friends, let's not be friends. It's like I can never get to a place with him where it's like, I feel like it's good. I don't know if this is a intervention type moment, something I needed to hear, because before this, I think part of my heart is, who knows, wow, maybe we're like, we're getting along well, maybe it turns into something more, but. I'm seeing that moment of clarity just, it hasn't worked out and it's been my desire for it to work out, but suck it up and realize that maybe God just doesn't have it in the plans for me and be at peace with that. Okay, here's my problem. The reason he's still in my life is because he inserts himself into my life. Okay? Like, yes, he's a great guy and I care about him a lot, but it's just been this constant, like, vicious cycle, you know? And, like, I've tried to be his friend, and he can't. And I've, I feel like I've stayed very consistent with that. And he is just always up and down, you know? And I want him in my life because, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know, like, uh, I don't know. I think I put off an aspect of uh, being serious with my, with my faith trying to win Cassie back. And I think for me it was, um, you know, I'll, I'll accept God's plan for me after I fix this myself. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of this issue by myself and then God's gonna, then I'm gonna fall into God's plan for me, what he has. And obviously it turned, it turned out to a long drawn out process with a lot of hurt. We can't both keep going through this thing for the rest of our lives. Yeah. We're not gonna be together, you know, and as like, Hard as it is to say goodbye to someone you care about, that's what you like. That's what I have to do. been together for a while and I really just appreciated all that you've done for me in my life, the friendship, the fun, the astounding physical contact. I think that you're really going to make me happy and that I'm going to love you till the day I die. How was that? I just don't know if I'm feeling it. <sighs> First of all, your posture's terrible. Well, I'm on a slope. The location's beautiful. Yeah, that's all I got going for me at this point. Now let's just get out of here. So we uh, went with the power of love over everything then, huh? Yeah. No set job, but the ring came anyways. Yeah, love conquers all. I think even being with someone that I love with will give me motivation and the endurance to keep fighting. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking of which, I know you're going to the Philippines. You know, I got you something. Because I know, like, you've been telling me it's hard when, like, you can't reach out to friends and stuff, and, like, you just gotta adjust to a whole culture. So I got you something. 
I'm just, a, I just wanna let you know that I'm just a ring away. Just give me a call, man. I know this wonder bell won't, I won't hear it from wherever you're at, but just know it's symbolic that I'm just around. Oh, you just gotta hit dial. I have to ring it to remind myself. <laughs> to, to give me a ring. You. To give me a ring. Did you get it sized? Best part is, one size fits all. Give me that finger. Wow, this is a special gift. Are you gonna text me in uh, China? I'm going to the Philippines. <laughs> the, Phil the Philippines, of course. You gonna text me when you get there? We'll text. Well, I hope so. I'll be sending you a little updates on me every day. We'll be in touch. I'm so glad we hung out. <laughs> I feel the same way as you. <laughs> no, truly though. Even amidst like having to work through some like weird feelings. Through all and that weird Kaylin drama. Yeah. There's, now there's a, good. there's a reason. Exactly. There's a reason why Something it so happen. good has come out of it. Yeah. And I'm like stoked on it. Aww. And even to feel that like affirmation from the Lord in the sense that like, you know, like I've blessed you with Linda and Cassie. Like I'm blessing you with like solid friends. Like that's genuine, like that literally has been in my prayer time with the Lord, he has said to me like, enjoy these friendships, like I've given them to you. So, yeah. That means a lot. Should we, Should we get in the water? I'm down. Are you? I mean, it might be kind of cold, but. I'll I mean, it's it. so pretty. We jumped into like the can. lake, remember? <laughs> Nothing can be colder than that. I know, that. this is gonna be <laughs> something that we do every time we hang out. Exactly. Jump in a cold water. Am I winning? Probably not. No. Oh. I feel like there's part of you that's excited I'm leaving. Really? I feel like you're just very entertained by my basketball season. You're kind of bored when I'm just home. Didn't see you a lot. I think one of the things that was hard was reconnecting with Cassie and then thought it was gonna go well and then it didn't. But do you think I just need to create that space in that relationship? I don't know. Maybe you guys want two different things out of life. Sounds and maybe and what you want, she might never want. I don't know. That's something you have to figure out. Yeah. Worst case scenario, if I'm single for the rest of my life, I always have you, right? You better know it, baby. No, you're gonna find somebody. Well. If I don't. And you'll meet her when you least expect it. If I don't, I can just tell everyone I got a, a silver haired fox waiting for me back home. <laughs> I don't know like when I'll be able to call and talk to you and stuff. You'll have to like set up a little chart of the times again. He did, he kept in touch when he was in China. We talked like two, three times a week sometimes. It's like the same exact time, 17 hours difference. It's hard to find a good friend like Caitlin. So then when they leave, it makes it even harder. Cause I like rely on his friendship a lot. I don't know, emotional support. <laughs> like gives me all the advice I need. And if I know he's just like, I can call him or whatever, but it's just different. Sometimes you just need like a Kaylin hug. Don't touch me, <laughs> don't touch me. Please, I love you. I miss you. We'll be in touch, okay? <laughs> Hey. It's weird, this is actually goodbye. <laughs> I feel like it's not happening. How do you feel? Almost numb, kind of the same way, like you are saying, like I can't really, it doesn't really. It's like it won't hit you until you're there. And then when I get there, I'll be so sad. Don't be sad, though. 
I just have been kind of thinking about like using using my time in the Philippines as like giving you the space that you've kind of been after and let us actually see what it's like to not have the other person in each other's lives and kind of do our own things for the first time. So you don't want to be friends this next year? It's not that I don't want to be friends. Like, you know I care about you a lot. But this has just been going on for so long at this point, and it's hard not to look at you a certain way or feel certain things. Like, it's still lingering feelings, I think. Maybe if we just stick to ourselves while I'm gone, being serious about moving forward with our lives without each other in it. Like a year of no talking, a year of not seeing each other, maybe it will be what you've finally been after. I had planned on going in and telling him, like, we can't talk. And then he brought it up. It was nice that he understood it, like that he got it. We had to face the reality of the fact that we didn't work out. I'm just sad. Just gonna, I am going to miss you. I miss you too. And I care about you so much. And I want you to have an amazing year. And you can talk to me anytime. I'm gonna try my best not to, and I don't mean that in a mean way. <laughs> I know, it's fine. It's always sad, like at that point in this unhealthy, messed up cycle of ours. <laughs> Somehow I still get sad about it because I did want it to work out with us, and I, I, I'm sorry and sad that it's been how it is and it's come to this. I feel like it won't be a year until I see you next. Why do you think that? I just always feel that way. You have something up your sleeve? I had always hoped that we would be able to be friends. I don't know, I just want him happy. And I don't want him to be miserable because of me. And that's kind of how I feel, is that he's kind of miserable because of me. My biggest fear with me leaving is that it's the same thing that it was last year and will probably always be. But my biggest fear leaving is that, you know, my grandma's health would decline or just something would happen to her while I'm gone. That's always my biggest fear. Hello? Yo, dog. It's your boy, Tony. Tony, what's up, my man? You need to get down here. Dude, I got it. I got the ring. Are you in Orange County? Yeah, I'm not too far away. And Cassie's here with me. <laughs> How funny that Cassie's with you. Um, I'm actually driving towards my mom's because I have to catch my flight. Well, on your way, did you just want to stop by and check out this thing? I mean, it's, it's nothing but just, you know, a symbol of my love and possibly my future with the girl I love. I don't know, I'm torn, dude, because obviously I'd love to see you both. I would like to see her again, but it's, I think it's time I start getting serious about moving forward. Oh, that makes sense. I could see why you may not want to come down here. The pieces are coming together to me now. I'm happy for you and happy found your ring. Um, tell Cassie, though, that I do say hi, so. All right. She's coming back. I gotta let you go. All right, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, have fun in China. I'm going to the Philippines. All right, bye. All right. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm gonna go get married. It's kind of sad that I'm treating this as like my final kind of goodbye or chapter with K. 
Cassie, but I'm also excited to see what it brings. I mean, I think taking this seriously and using the Philippines as a means to focus on myself and really trust in God and what he has for me is gonna be a big thing for me. Okay, Tony, you wanna to make an introduction to us? To us. So this is my girlfriend, Delaney. <laughs> Uh, she's an amazing woman, great personality, bigger heart. If you had to ask me how we got together and how I made this work, I would have the same question. Wow, what a great opening. <laughs> You're practicing that. I did wink at you without knowing you. I did give you some pet names without knowing you. Am I right, Pop-Tart? And I was like, what did you just call me? He's like, Pop-Tart? And I was like, what? Why? He's like, oh, don't girls like it when you give them pet names? And I was like, oh, this is so weird. She didn't like it. Oh, yeah. So that was like my, if you had to say like our introduction, I feel like that was my introduction to Tony. Which wasn't a good introduction. But it was a introduction.